G'day, welcome to this video on how to make a brush tail possum box. Now today we will be making a box for the brush tail but the same rules for this box will apply for other possums and birds for that matter and there's a lot of important points that I need to point out the safety for the wildlife mostly and um, yeah just making a good long lasting box that um, will be a good home for years to come. So what we have here is a finished brush tail box um, the dimensions of which you can find for, the, for this one on the Office of Environment and Heritage website. This one here is made out of recycled plywood and you can see this blue, this is from a building site. So this lid on this one was the hoarding of a massive development uh, in Sydney. So we've just managed to turn that into something worthwhile. So the box we'll be making today will be from a fresh sheet of this 18mm um, ply. The width of the ply is quite important, so the thicker the ply, the more insulated the box. And um, the wildlife, they want to be warm inside, they want, and they want the box to last for as long as possible. So a nice thick ply, 12mm, too, too um, thin, go for at least, at least 15 but try to get 17 plus 20mm, perfect. Okay, so here's our fresh sheet, all kind of fresh, it's been chopped up, chopped up very rough, there's no uh, well, there's one straight side and that's quite important to at least have one straight side when you're cutting this. Um, and for all of these cuts that you're going to do, you can either get your tape measure out and your square, or I like to have a, a template, so I'll just have, that's the side of the box and that's measured up 420, 470, and you can just stick that on your ply, mark around it and cut it out. But even when you're cutting out these, just make sure you've got a nice square edge because when you're joining it you want it to fit nice and snug any kind of give or bend is going to compromise the the integrity of the um, finished box so you want it nice and square so we've got 420 perfect 470 spot on so we'll do the same for the other side there is our other side and they match up perfectly so yeah, like I say, this, the, the, um, the straight edge is like so important, especially when you're dealing with old ply. You want it to be as snug and as, as neat as possible. Okay, so sides are done. We need now to get the, um, the, the front and the backs done. Now, what's important is um, getting this geometry right because we want the lid to sit down nice and flush. Uh, on the finished box. So if you're any good at maths you'll know Pythagoras' theorem and how to use some of the buttons on the calculator that scare the hell out of me. So I have a guy that I call and he, he does my maths for me and um, Mark will let me know what angle this is here because that's this is what we need to know is this angle right here because we're going to use that angle as the bevel for the, the back and the bevel for the front. So the lid will sit nice and flush. You can get that bevel cut across here using a drop saw that's got a um, functionality of adjusting the, the tilt of the saw. Um, if you don't have that, you can just do your best with a, with a circular saw and get the file out or the, the rasp and some sandpaper. You'll make it work, but I'm going with the saw today because that's um, easier and quicker and I make enough mistakes. 9.46 is the bevel that we want, so that's on zero at the moment. So there's 10, about, yeah, nine point, lock that off. There's our nice 9.46324 recurring beveled edge, and it's starting to take shape. You can see at this point already, you can see that angle there just matches this angle perfectly so once again when our lid sits down it'll be nice and flush and it means no drafts will come in or extra rain. All right there's our back once again a 9.46 beveled edge and all the bits now will come nicely together. Before we um, start gluing and screwing this box together what needs to be done is creating a ladder inside for um, wildlife to climb out of. So you can 
you can put mesh in there or a um, or chicken wire f for a ladder, but I'd highly advise against it just because over time that could come away and potentially trap uh, anything inside, especially with birds. You don't want to be um, creating a death trap. All right. So um, what I'm going to be doing is cutting just a series of just one or two mil lines in here, which will act as something to sort of claw up and um, and um, climb in and out of the box. I also like to, I also like to do that along the outside because so often I see, um, especially possums, they'll use this as a as something to climb on. So climb up there, have a little sit up there, and so I, I put ladders wherever I can, just to give them a bit of a helping hand. And they could be being chased by a cat or a dog, and you may as well make their journey to safety that bit quicker. So um, I've made this template to act as a grid just so it's nice and neat so I'm going to mark out mark out um, some lines just so they're evenly spaced this doesn't matter you can do it by eye I normally do it by eye when I'm, there's no cameras <laughs> um, you might want to put a grid like that at the front so it just looks a bit neater if it's measured up but I tend to do it by eye these days and because um, they don't care if it's not uh, if your lines aren't parallel, that's for sure. So, so you just need to do this before you put it together because it's impossible to do it once you've um, stuck it all together. I've just set the saw to just to go down into the first little section of ply there. That's enough. So you can see. I might just put one more in actually. So, and maybe one more. That might be the cut that saves that little one. As his mum's been hit by a car and he needs to escape the box. I just try to imagine the worst case scenario. So the worst case scenario is that the mother's gone off to get some food. The babies, it's, babies are in here, nice and warm. Mum gets hit by a car what are the babies going to do so hopefully we can sort of make as easy as possible and and make some escape routes if um if it's needed so um, i'm going to do that on all the inside pieces we'll be painting over this as well later but you can see they can really get their claws in there and just have a sit up on the top or like i say if they're getting chased by anything they can um just a quick exit into safety yeah, so the entrance hole, kind of important. So we want to come down about 100 mil from the middle. And that'll be the centre of our um, hole. And maybe a little bit of um, WD to make it easy to come out. So always double check where you're putting your holes in your cuts because it's really easy to go horribly wrong by rushing it. Okay so there's our entrance. Very important having <laughs> the ladders in the front bit. You just want to rough it up. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat but um, you could even score it with a with a knife or just you want to just get it nice and rough or even you could get a um, handsaw and just just handsaw some lines in there but yeah it does not have to be perfect it just has to work okay, so we've got all of our pieces ready to go apart from the base we'll sort that out later um, and we're going to be putting this together all the blue sides facing out all our lines are straight all our bevels are good um, I like to glue the front and screw it at the same time. I don't know if that's um, the done thing in woodworking circles, but that's how I roll. The glue that I like to use, it's um, weather resistant, it dries really quick, and um, yeah, it works a treat. As far as screws, you need galvanized screws. Um, if you don't have galvanized screws, um, other screws will do but your galvanized will last a lot longer. I got these at a garage sale, these are decking screws and they're um, yeah I've got a feeling that they're 
quite hard wearing with the weather. So you just, it's all about something that lasts and uh, is um, strong enough, right length. Glue it and screw it. Glue it and screw it, my friend. Perfect. No, I find whistling quite smug. Alright, that's good. We'll come back to the middle when we're joining it all together at the end. But that is a nice flush finish at the front. I'm happy with that. Now we'll do the back. Alright, so you can see I've... Oh no, that's pretty flush. I could have gone an extra mil on that, but you got to not worry too much. and. Um, yeah, just as long as it's solid, square, solid and square, that's what you want. I like to, when I get to this sort of stage where you know it's all working and your cuts have worked and, and you're getting there, you've actually done something that's working out, I like to reward myself. Not with, um, not with a beer. Not with a cup of tea, but with a power chord. That was a G minor. One of my favourites. G minor bird. It says a lot, the G minor. Delves deep. This is a bit of scrap that I just found down there, and this will be perfect for our base. Get this piece, and uh, I've just marked out underneath um, the actual dimensions that we need. I, um, if you, yeah. Just to put the direction that it's facing, just so I don't have to work out which way to spin it. You don't want to be busting out the sides for putting this bit, so best um, just, yeah, don't force it, don't farrow force it too much. And that goes for everything in life. So you want your base, even if you're sort of fudging these dimensions at all, you want your base to sit inside the four walls. So um, it just gives that extra bit of stability and strength, which is what you want. When it comes to painting this, like this is already half painted for me, so um, I'm going to just give it a light sand and give it just some non-toxic water-based um, brown paint. But if it was just regular ply without any kind of treating, you want to give it, uh, you want to oil it, but you want to use a non-toxic oil like this tongue oil here. Can you see that? So this is like a non-toxic -tox um, timber sealant, which for obvious reasons, you don't want to be filling the box up with lead paint or whatever it is that uh, is um, going to be harmful. The lid, yeah, will have, yeah, so with the hinges, for it, this brush tail box is a wider, so I'm going to give it two hinges, but with the, anything smaller, or if it's got a, if anything smaller, just the one hinge, you're not going to be opening it and closing it every five minutes, so just, just something that's um, functional every now and again but yeah you, you sh the only reason you want to be checking in your box is if you're um if you're suspicious that there's minor birds have moved in um or bees maybe sometimes move in um you can create a baffle we'll, we might talk about that after but the just a for the front of the box to stop the minor birds that like to fly in that direct line into their roosting site so a baffle over the front so you got to come underneath to get in so that's if it gets overtaken by Indian miners. Now when you these screws that I'm putting in like this one day this box will fall apart and um, and it means that screws will be exposed so what you see a lot of especially with the brush tail boxes 
you might find a stick, someone's found a bit of branch and cut it off and, and screwed it in. It looks pretty and it also gives the possum something to hold on to when they climb in. But over time, that stick's going to fall out and it's going to reveal these two big old screws that are going to be rusted and the, whatever's climbing in is going to cut their feet pretty badly um, on them. So if you do want to put a stick in there or a branch, you can. Um, there's a few ways you could do it. You could um, put a couple of bits of uh, dowel in the back of the branch and then drill a couple of holes and then ram it in. I just heard this morning about some J J Japanese uh, Japanese nails, which wooden, are wooden nails. wooden nails, so they're timber, um, like a cone, and they um, you can drive them in and and saw them off at the end. That sound like a pretty good idea, and you make your own out of um, chopsticks um, or bits of dowel that you've got lying around. Just whittle one up. Always. Does the hole, does it, does the hole have to be circular? No, no. So the, you could do that with a jigsaw. If you don't have a jigsaw, you could do it with a drill. You could just you could just drill. That's what the first ones I made were. I just a whole bunch of holes drilling around. And it doesn't need to be neat. Like it's just as long as it's um, snug. Like if you imagine a hollow on a tree, like there's, it's nothing like this. It's cracks and crevices and openings here and there. So. Different it, animals. Yeah, so the bigger the animal, the bigger the hole. What I'd like to do now is just a, a line of glue on the insides just to give it a bit of... It, it's, it's rock solid and tight, airtight in there, but this will just help to... a bit of extra. This is glue. Strong stuff. Let's tidy that up. Um, what we need to do also for, is to drill a couple of probably seven or eight mil holes in the corners just to act as drainage. They're pretty clean animals though, the possums, so they'll, they will keep it tidy, but um, you want to just give them a helping hand by drilling some holes in there, which I'll do that now. At the front, what I like to do is to put a, a nice piece of hardwood over the front, so um, it looks good and also it just gives a bit of extra strength around the entrance hole in case it gets chewed, especially with the parrots, They'll, they like to chew around the entrance hole. So if you can put a bit of hardwood, hardwood there, it just protects this from just spreading right out. So, and it also looks pretty neat. I've got here these leftover bits from a miller, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the hole in through there. And it'll, Oh, I think so, yeah, and it just gives a bit more of like a, it's like a, it's like a porch, it's like a front porch over the front as well, a bit of extra protection from the elements, and, and it makes that entrance hole a bit more inviting, yeah. I haven't got any feedback on these from them yet, but I think it'd be, if I was a possum, I'd, I'd like one. <laughs> so, I'm just going to mark this off here. Mark this off. What you can do with these holes that I've bored in, a bit of glue, a bit of sawdust. All right, there we have it, in the front of our box complete. We just need to chuck a lid on that and we're done. Oh, perfect. So for the lid, you want to um, you want a piece that's got a, just a little bit hanging over the sides, maybe like 20 mil, a um, little bit over the back, just to sort of stop that extra bit of sunshine heating up the box. They can also sit flush up there, up to the box if you want, but I like a bit of overhang just so it, just so it keeps the box that little bit cooler in the summer. And you want it to come out about 120 mil. It's just because I've put this on, it needs to come out just a little bit further. I reckon that's pretty good. That's a bit that I've had laying around. Now I like to make the edges cut cut it down so the rain comes down, it sort of drips off rather than drips back into the ply. So um, what was that angle? It was nine and a half degrees. So I reckon if you go like maybe double that, so 20 degrees, chop it down and then you've got a nice little overhanging roof. And up the back, do that nine degrees so then that'll sit flush with the 
back of the box. So you can see our front, on that angle for you. You can see it, so the water will come down and run off, just run off the top there. A couple of um, hinges on that, and we're done. It is. <laughs> uh, these are zinc plated. I kind of um, looked all over for galvanised, good weather wearing hinges, but this is the best I could come up with. Um, you can also put a bit of um, bike tyre over there just to waterproof your hinges as well. Now those birds making a racket, I think they're up there with my um, favourite bird because they're the ones that alert all the other birds that there's a cat in the neighbourhood or a snake up the tree. So they get a bad rap, the noisy miner, but I think they're all right. Just the one hinge on there too, I reckon. I reckon, yeah, just go the one. It's not gonna be a bathroom door or anything. You just want it to, to work. So one hinge. If you're using a heavy bit of timber, maybe two, but, um, and we're done. That's pretty much it. So afterwards, maybe I'd give this one a light sand and I've got some water-based brown paint that I could use. You'd give this the tongue oil. So this oil up this entrance hole with the tongue oil and then the rest of it, give it a bit of brown paint. Or not, if you want to chuck it up like that. That looks pretty cool like that, I reckon. Um, but you just think about what's going to last. That's pretty much it. The design for this one, for this box, is from, like I said, from the... Um, Office of Environment and Heritage. This this is a really good book. Um, it's got some really nice ideas in it and um, dimensions for all kinds of animals. You can find that one. Nest Boxes for Wildlife by Alan and Stacey Franks. That's really good. Um, like I said before, I think I just mentioned, just touched on it. If you're worried about any sides letting in cold and rains, there's an old bike in a tube. Just staple gun that up underneath and just go around the top and you've got a nice little um, bit of protection from the weather. Before you hang it up in the tree, just make sure that all the paint's dried and the smell's gone. So maybe wait a week or two after you've done the paint before you hang it up in the tree. Um, if you're trying to attract a possum into there, maybe a couple of grapes. Um, and yeah, it won't be long before, um, before there's something in there. So if you've got one out of your roof, Make sure that um, you've sealed up your roof so it can't get back in there and this is ready to go. Yeah, a couple of grapes is good, but um, just check it every couple of days to make sure that the grapes aren't going off. And now on the bottom of the box, a bit of nesting material. This is some um, really nice wood chip that I got from the millers. Um, just down the bottom, just, you know, that 30, 40 mils worth. That's nice. So that can go down the, in the bottom of the box and the possums will um, just take their own nesting material to add to that. But that's, that's, that's really good stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't put sawdust that's been have treated, anything treated, um, just as natural as possible. A couple of holes in the sides, about 150 mil down and this spacer at the back. So, so about 150 mil down, a couple of holes through there, wire through there. This will sit at the back of the tree, get a bit of so the wire will go through there, through a bit of hose pipe around the side of the tree. Any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. I don't care if you comment, subscribe, do whatever you've got to do. Most importantly, make a box and um, do your bit for these guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.